This video is brought to you by Atlas VPN. Atlas VPN is essentially a virtual private network that makes all of your internet traffic travel through an encrypted tunnel. This way it protects you from spying, public Wi-Fi dangers and hides your IP address and your online activities. Right now they're running a Cyber Month deal and you can get a 3 year subscription for just $1.39 a month with a 30 day money back guarantee. So take advantage of this offer by clicking the link in the video description below. One of my favourite aspects about Atlas VPN is its amazing data breach monitor. By inserting your email address, the tool scans the internet to see if it ended up in any recorded data breaches or data dumps that include emails, names, passwords and other sensitive information. What I also love about Atlas VPN is that it encrypts all the data you sent, but is also a great help for everyday life situations to avoid censorship when travelling abroad, to increase your security on public internet connections, to get the best deals on airline tickets and hotels, to block malicious third party links and ads, and of course to access geoblock libraries on streaming platforms such as Netflix, Amazon Prime, Hulu, HBO, and many more. Right now, they're running a Cyber Month deal, and you can get a three-year subscription for just $1.39 a month with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So take advantage of this offer by clicking the link in the video description below. I remember before the blackout was holding my hands over Kaylee's ears. I think I was more focused on her hands on mine. Lady, stay back! We've all heard of the term butterfly effect. Whether it's referring to the knock-on effect of hard work, or, more correctly, the unknown effects of actions in complex systems, the phrase has entered common vernacular, and the 2004 film of the same name, written and directed by Eric Bress and J. Mac Gruber, starring Ashton Kutcher and Amy Smart, certainly played a big part in that. Kutcher plays 20-year-old college student Evan Trayborn, who experiences blackouts and memory loss throughout his childhood. Later in his 20s, Evan finds that he can travel back in time to inhabit his former self during those bouts, with his adult mind inhabiting his younger body. With this, he attempts to change the present for himself, his friends, and family by changing his past, leading to unforeseen consequences for all. And boy do these consequences get dark. Through this darkness, the butterfly effect unpacks some pretty weighty themes relating to both its titular facet of chaos theory and existentialism, giving us an interesting lens to see our place in this incredibly complex universe of space, time, cause and effect. There is no right. You can't change who people are without destroying who they were. Who says you can't make things better? You can't play God, son. Behind the narrative and technique, the film presents its inspiration front and center in its opening quote, which explains, It has been said that something as small as the flutter of a butterfly's wing can ultimately cause a typhoon halfway around the world, a quote which it credits to chaos theory. Chaos theory, proposed by meteorologist Edward Lorenz, is an interdisciplinary theory which has been applied in many fields from mathematics to psychology. It posits that beneath chaotic systems are underlying patterns of interconnectedness which feed into the outcomes. In other words, nothing is random, everything has a cause and effect, even if those causes and effects are incredibly hard to measure and understand. This final part is incredibly important, as chaos theory insists on unpredictability, with there being virtually no way to know if a parameter will have a small effect, a massive effect, or even no effect. This facet of chaos theory is felt throughout Evan's slingshots throughout time, with some changes such as stopping Kaylee's father from filming them having a phenomenal effect, and others like the young Evan slamming his hands onto spikes virtually having none, despite seeming like it should. This full understanding of chaos theory can often butt up against the common understanding of leverage. The term is often used in business scenarios. For example, when a mentor says attending a certain event would have a butterfly effect on your career. But, as we know, using the phrase to imply positive action like this is totally incorrect, as nobody can know the outcomes of events in chaos theory. In the butterfly effect, Evan comes to this realization himself, albeit through an incredibly tragic and scarring set of events. Anyone finds this. It means that my plan didn't work and I'm already dead. Go away.
The film focuses on Evan and the world, or should I say, worlds that he inhabits. In his teens, Evan is not quite normal, often acting strangely for reasons that will soon make sense, and experiencing frequent blackouts. These blackouts come at moments of tremendous stress, which, sadly, are incredibly frequent in Evan's young life, whether that be from his father attempting to strangle him to death, or multiple accidents that traumatize his friends. Evan's world gets dark very quickly. What happened, Evan, the trip? I don't know. I don't remember. Something must have happened. Something set him off. I blacked it out. Don't try to use your blackouts to get out of this one. Years later, Evan, trapped in the same life, is continuing to struggle. We cut to him and his so-called friends Lenny and siblings Tommy and Kaylee laying dynamite in a woman's mailbox, an event which goes about as badly as it can, killing the woman and her newborn child. Getting over the event, Kaylee and Evan are drawn to each other, which sends Tommy into a rage, seeing him first assault a member of the public, then burn Evan's childhood dog alive. As a result, Evan's mother moves them away, and his blackouts cease. Seven years later, now a psychology major, he celebrates the success of living blackout free, but is inevitably drawn back to his childhood journals. As he turns their pages, he blacks out, diving into the memories which occurred during those blackouts. Soon, Evan realizes that he isn't simply remembering these events, but has full agency in changing his past. Attempting to right the wrongs done to him and his childhood friends, Evan starts digging up the past, first attempting to talk to a horrifically isolated and aggressive Lenny before locating a more talkative Kaylee. But when he brings up the past, something in Kaylee snaps, resulting in her suicide later that night. Rightfully distraught, Evan grabs his journal, sending himself back to the time that he and Kaylee were exploited by Kaylee's abusive father, where Evan uses his powers to confront him. Erupting back to the present, Evan was successful in changing the past, creating the titular butterfly effect, which results in a radically different present. In this reality, not only is Kaylee still alive, but she's his romantic partner, and all the joy that comes with that is immediately reflected in the film's bold colours. Everything else has changed too. Instead of a book smart student, he's a frat boy, and, well, Tommy comes after him for being with Kaylee, resulting in assaults and Tommy's death, casting Evan straight into prison. You better not bitch up, man. Can you protect me? Jesus himself couldn't make me stand up against the Brotherhood. Now incarcerated, he begs his mother to bring his journals, which she obliges, casting himself back once more. This time he arrives on the day that Tommy killed his dog. With intellect beyond his years, he manages to talk Tommy out of the act. That is, before Lenny goes ahead and stabs Tommy in the back. Catapulted back to the present, it's not as peachy as Evan had hoped, prompting him to confront another memory, this time with his father. Alas, this also doesn't go too well, resulting in the same original outcome of his father's death. With little having changed, Evan goes in search for Kay Lee, who he finds beaten up in a dingy apartment, working as a prostitute. Lamenting, in one of the most touching moments of the film, he exclaims how they were happy once, but in this reality, that once never existed. At least not for anyone but him. Every time I try to help someone, everything just goes to shit. Well, don't give up now, Slick. Hell, you've already done so much for me. Sending himself back again, Evan attempts to stop the woman from being blown up by their mailbox prank. But, caught in the blast, he becomes a quadriplegic. Here, there's a catch. Despite this version of the world being misery for Evan and his mother, who suffers from lung cancer after taking up smoking following his accident, the world otherwise appears bright. Lenny and Kaylee are in a loving relationship, and the sadistic Tommy turned himself around to dedicate his life to God. Alas, Evan's inner pain and isolation is too much, forcing him to try and find a better world for himself. This sends him back once more, but attempting to save them all, he accidentally blows up Kaylee, forcing him into a future where his journals were never written, where he's locked up in a mental institution, just like his father, a future where he cannot go back, or so he thinks. Breaking out of his room, he manages to watch an old family video brought onto the ward by his mother, sending him back even further. But here the paths diverge, with the film's theatrical and controversial director's cut holding different endings. The former showing Evan return to a past before he met Kay Lee, one in which he forces her away so that they never became friends, resulting in a good life for both of them, but one where Evan must live without her. The latter ending is much more disturbing, taking us back to the moment of Evan's birth, where he strangles himself in the womb, becoming a stillbirth, just like his mother's two children before him, who seemingly must have had the same curse. It must end with me. Just by being here, you may be killing your mother. That's bullshit, you know? I'll send you a postcard when I made everything perfect. Here it's worth noting that when Evan first comes across his ability to change his past events, he acts altruistically, hoping to change the future to save the love of his life, something we can all empathize with. But following his rash assault on Tommy, Evan's motivation changes slightly. 
Soon it becomes clear that Evan is playing God, essentially trying to piece together the perfect world for himself. One where the woman he loves also loves him back, where he's well and healthy, where his mother doesn't have lung cancer, where his past isn't chasing him at every turn. Although we can all empathise with Evan's want to change the past, it's no surprise that in his search for a perfect world, his mental resilience gets ground down. In an attempt to live the perfect life, he ends up living multiple lives of pain. Man, I know it's hard, but you can't give up. I can't even fucking kill myself. <sighs> Don't talk like that. This leaves us with a very prescient question. How can we not be terrified to do anything in a world where each and every one of our actions has far-reaching butterfly effects? And yes, we're talking every action, whether that be speaking up against injustice, missing a deadline, or simply waking up 10 minutes late one day. As chaos theory has dictated, we have no idea of the long-term effects of all these actions, but they certainly will have some pretty serious consequences. But before we begin to scrutinise everything we do, and fall into the same trap that Evan did, let's take a step back and consider what we're looking at, an existential problem. A problem which, by definition, centres on the experience we have within this world. Here it's worth looking at one of the most influential existentialist thinkers for answers, 20th century French philosopher Jean-Paul Sartre. In his many inquiries into existentialism, Sartre insists that instead of looking at the long-term butterfly effects of our actions, being human simply requires us to act. His push to simply do and simply be may feel oversimplified, but it cuts to the core of his breed of existentialism, one in which we understand ourselves, the world around us, and the values we hold through action, namely through actions which we think are unquestionably morally right. Alongside this Nike-like attitude of just do it, or just do the right thing, Sartre's existentialism also takes into careful consideration a point that the butterfly effect juggles with. At the end of the film, at least in the director's cut where Evan kills himself in his mother's womb, it's fair to say that Evan comes to the conclusion that in the face of the infinite futures he could have, his actions and existence are hopelessly pointless. Sartre stares this existentialist lament of life not having meaning square in the eyes and, again, answering with confusing simplicity, agrees. The philosopher acknowledges that life may be an anomaly, that our existence may be even less than a drop in an ocean, and that because of this, our existence and every decision we make is pointless. But with that, he asks, why should that stop us from doing the right thing? Why shouldn't we value ourselves, our actions, and those around us? In other words, we should use that knowledge as an emancipation to create meaning for ourselves. This lesser explored but wholly motivating side of existentialism is why I believe the theatrical cut of the butterfly effect goes much deeper. Because in this ending, Evan comes to the realisation that, even with all the options in the world at his fingertips, the only meaningful way he can continue living is to stop changing the past to suit him and have it benefit the world around him. In this case, Kay Lee, his world. Of course, this result is drenched in the bittersweet, but so is most of existence. To quote Sada once more, there may be more beautiful times, but this one is ours. Man, I'd think twice about what you're doing. You could wake up a lot more fucked up than you are now. More fucked up than I already am. 